Madhouse Podcasting Network. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another podcast, um, a part of Scare Act Appreciation Month. I'm here, your boy Sam. As always, we've got Tony here. And today we have the very much esteemed guest, um, scaring our hearts since 2018 at Not Scary Farm. We got Gomez. How are we doing today, buddy? I'm doing amazing, man. I am welcome to be here. I feel welcome to be here. I, uh, I see you still got rocking the red hair, man. It's still going in there deep with the carnival look. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still it's still still bright red. Um going to keep it red for a while. Yeah. I'm probably going to re-dye it sometime soon. Like <laughs> just, re-dye it and just add more red to it. There you go. Just keep it year round. That's all it is, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> perfect for Christmas. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a festive color. So it, is. it worked festive. out. Very festive, man. Very festive. Uh so well, well, let, let's just start with this. Um what made you want to get into scare acting? Uh, what, well, uh, growing up, I've always loved horror movies. Uh, I actually, the first horror movie I ever watched was A Nightmare on Elm Street. And um, mm-hmm. one day my family was like, hey, there's this event going out and Knott's. I, I grew up going Knott's Berry Farm. Um, and they're like, yeah, there's this Halloween event. Do you want to check it out? I was, it was in 06 when I first went. Oh, uh, wow. And and I, I fell in love with it. Uh, you know, growing up, I, I would go pretty much all the time and then uh i think it was i was about maybe 17 when i got my first uh scary farm pass oh, and then sure. i i always wanted to do it and then there were nights where like most people they would sit in carnival and like i was like oh one day i'm gonna do that or i would go through the mazes and i'll be like one day i'm gonna do that one day i'm gonna do it and i like i turned 18 and i never nobody i didn't really know anybody um who did that so they could help me apply to it and do it and it wasn't until I worked at a um, indoor water park where I met a friend who was actually in Carnival, and he kind of told me, um, "So yeah, this is this is the application process. You know, you're gonna apply, you're gonna submit your application, you're gonna go do an audition, and that's just how it went." And ever since 2018, I've been doing it, and I've loved it ever since. Dude, love it. I mean, that, I think that's what goes for me and Sammy. We just we we did the season pass 2019, and. I think we just love the event in general, right, Sam? Oh yeah, we we definitely fell in love. I went from being as um, as if you're an avid watcher of the channel, uh, I went from being like absolutely terrified of anything, whether it be scary movies or uh, walking through haunts, to just like I need to be there. Like, even though I now live out of state, it's like I planned my. I've been planning all year to get to not scary farm because so i was like man i gotta yeah. be there like what's gonna work with my schedule it was like i had the opportunity to go to orlando which would have been super sick but i was like if i go to orlando that means i can't go to not scary farm and it's like well i'm gonna choose not scary farm this time yeah i think the thing about not scary Farm that everybody loves it's the og haunt so everybody's like oh i gotta at least make one stop there yeah, no, you're right, because I got friends out in uh, Orlando that when I talk to them about Knots, it's on their list that, like, when haunt season comes around, they want to come check it out. They want to see, they've seen POVs, they've seen everything, and they love the way the mazes look, and they want to come check it out and see what this haunt has to offer. Obviously, like you said, this is the one that started it all. Without this one, we wouldn't have Horror Nights, we wouldn't have Hayride, we wouldn't have, like, Dark Harbor and all that. So, this is the yeah, one that, fast. yeah, this is the one that set the bar for it, man. This is the one that opened a lot of doors to a lot of different haunts out there in the world. No, yeah, most definitely. I, what it started, um, I think next season in 2022 is going to be the 50th, I believe. Uh, 49th. 
forty nine. I think. Yeah, forty nine. And then twenty twenty three, we're looking at the fiftieth. Yeah, fiftieth. So yeah, it, it's been around for a while. Yeah, man, fifty plus years, man. We're gonna be heading towards not scary farm, man, and that is oh, yeah. nuts to even think about that it's been around this long and it's still relevant and still strong and popular to this day. You know, you got diehard fans that will show up every single night of the event just to come see their favorite monsters or whatnot and go through yeah. some of their favorite mazes. It's it's nuts, man. Yeah, I've met some people that actually they didn't get the opportunity to get the pass, but they would still buy daily tickets to go just just to go and sit in like the zones, not even really go through the mazes. Yeah. But some people are like they go through the mazes and it's like a one and done thing. They just mostly go for the zones. Right. No, I completely agree, man. So you talked about obviously being a fan of the event since 06, finally getting the pass in 2017. When you turned 18, did you apply or did you wait a little bit? Uh, and how did that go for you? Uh, I waited a little bit. I applied. Um, so in 20, 2018 was my first season. I'm 24. If my math is right, I think it was 21 when I first applied. Right. Okay. Uh, so that there, there was that. I did want to really do it when I was 18. I like that I had nobody to help me out. Like, how to do it? Where do I go? Who do I call? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where you got to just try to just throw it out there and just be like, all right, I got to figure out when auditions are. I got to figure out this. I got to figure out that. A ton of research goes into just the audition process alone, just to because yes, you want to nail most, it and get in. So, absolutely, most most definitely. Um, that's why uh, a lot of people that ask me like, Oh, how do you do it? I kind of just tell them like, Oh, like, okay. So this is like the application process. It starts around this time. Yeah. Cause I have a lot of, I, I know a lot of people that are like really excited to do that, that they, that that's something they will like, that's on their bucket list that they want to at least do once. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I would completely agree. If I got the opportunity to scare one night at scary farm, I would jump on it in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's scary farm is it's a different level i mean every every haunt's got its own uniqueness but i feel like haunt it's it's got a special place in my heart and i will always be there definitely uh you mentioned the uniqueness of knots what is uh what do you what do you think sets knots apart from other events uh the thing that i think it sets it apart from other events it's got its own storyline so every zone is connected to you know the green witch that pretty much has started at all the ghost town. Uh, you know, they got the, the origins of Chris of Calico kind of going yeah. back, back into the story of like how it all started, where it all started and kind of what happened. And uh, if you're really into the lores, like some people actually look into it. Um, the, the, the green, which is cursed kind of spreads out into all the zones, uh, the hollows uh, forsaken. I've, I've heard different stories about like forsaken in the hollows that, but it's mostly how the Green Witch's curse is just spreading in like, you know, you know, uh, like the town folk of Ghost Town are like going everywhere. And then like, they're like, oh, yeah, like, come check out our town. And, you know, it's a, it's a great place. And then the, the Witch's curse falls on them and then it, it just spreads. Exactly. No, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where when they introduce that origin storyline, I think more people, whether you're a uh, regular or not, started kind of taking interest in that. Um, 2019 was the first year we got Origins, which led into Ghost Town, which also led to The Hanging. Um, and Origins, if, if anyone paid attention in there, even the diehard fans know that there was a ton of Easter eggs referencing other zones uh, previous years and whatnot. So it, it was really just overall the, the accumulation of all this storytelling for these last like 40-plus um, years and kind of giving it an origin story to tell people, like, this is how, this is what happened, this is how it happened. And this is the story that you don't know so far. Yeah. So Origins kind of worked out for the diehard fans and like the newbies that were just getting into that whole haunt storyline and they wanted to find out more about it. Yeah. So going into your first season of Haunt, uh, where were you uh, first casted in? Were you doing mazes? Were you doing scare zones? How were you first casted? Uh, my first year of Haunt, I was actually, I actually auditioned for Boardwalk my first year of Haunt in 2018 um but i ended up getting put into our, our dark entities and i had the opportunity to pull, open up my first maze um you know it was a new thing for for not scary farm especially since it's been a while since they did like an alien themed maze since alien uh, uh, annihilation right. i believe it was um 
I was actually the stunt in in Dark Entities. So there was, I think it might have been the third or fourth room where it's like this really long dark hallway with like red strobing lights. I was in that room. I was on a like a fly rig. So I would go fly back and forth across the room uh, to a certain point. That's what I did my first year of Haunt. First year of Haunt, oh. man. Dark Entities, man. Great. You know, I like that's one of my I like that maze, honestly. Not a lot of people yeah. do, but I like it. No, I, no, I, I yeah. love that maze. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, I think it's a great maze. Um, I personally, I enjoyed doing it. I I enjoyed seeing it from like a guest perspective, especially this season because they've had the opportunity to revamp it, you know, add new things. Right. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to go into it in 2019, um, but I did get the opportunity to go into it this season. And I, I just feel like it was, they've done so much to it that it's it's new, it's fresh. And I'm hoping that they just keep it going and like keep it growing, essentially. I, I completely agree. Uh, I love that maze for a few different reasons. One is there's never a wait time, so it's always a great time because you don't have to wait in the line. Um, and then another thing I really love about that is Tony is absolutely terrified of that maze because of the <laughs> insects in there. So it's the only maze I know that Tony is going to walk in and probably get scared or at least a little un- uneasy which makes me happy because i'm a huge huge person that's easy to get scared so if i know tony's gonna get scared in there too i'm like okay cool this is nice and the other thing at least this season is every time we went in there it was really dark so it's very hard to navigate which just added another layer of intensity to it yeah, that maze is, it's its absolutely very dark. Um, compared to uh, the spot I was in in Origins, I think that maze is, I mean, not compared to Trick or Treat Lights Out, but that maze is actually very dark. Yeah. It's finally, Sammy has something on me to uh, to say that he enjoys of me getting scared, even though <laughs> I, I'm always dropping that line of him getting scared. It's always hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> so 20... You, 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 Okay, go for it. Go for it. I was gonna Take say so. So, 2018, you're 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 opening Dark Entities. You have a good season. Uh, you liked it both. Uh, from a guest perspective, you had a fun time doing it as uh one of the monsters in there. Going into 2019, man, what's your next step? Where do you go from there? Uh, 2019, I actually re auditioned um for uh, Dark Entities. Um, I actually got uh kind of like rehire status and I got the opportunity to get back that same spot I was in in 2018 but I was like uh I actually want to try and re-audition because I feel a lot more confident in my ability to be out in boardwalk so I re-auditioned for boardwalk and same thing happened um I auditioned and they called me up and they're like hey yeah you're gonna be in origins we're gonna offer you a spot in origins so in 2019 I opened up origins I was the werewolf bandit in the bank vault Oh, that's a good that's a good role right there, man. I remember seeing that one it a was, lot. It was a great role because they gave me a lot of freedom to um so I got a character sheet and they it like I got the back back uh sorry, the backstory of the character. Um there wasn't a lot to it, so they gave me the freedom to, you know, add to him, make him grow, make him who he is right. uh, to this to this day. Right. Yeah, no, that's uh that I mean me, along with a lot of fans, can agree that that maze right there, I think, really set the standards and bar for a lot of mazes to come because, uh, like we've always said, it's always just a love letter to Ghost Town. And I remember, I remember first walking through it and just being blown away by what I saw. I mean, especially where it's located in the uh, the Red Barn in Ghost Town, but they utilize that space so well, and it, it's just so well put together. You see a lot of the, the aspects and... um iconic uh like characters and buildings that they use throughout ghost town um yeah that over the years have brought ghost town to life so it's really cool walking through that and seeing that come to life yeah one of the one of the biggest things that a lot of people usually miss but it's like one of the biggest things to bigger fans it's um in the in the maze when you're walking through the outside of the saloon the next area once you get past the bedroom it there's a sign that says haunted shack so you're walking into the haunted shack itself yeah man that's i mean just the little easter eggs and stuff like that if you really pay attention it's it's really cool to to check out yeah. in there oh most definitely yeah 
And uh, I think my favorite thing about that, that I was kind of jealous that I didn't get the opportunity to do because of my height, it's um, the whole catawampus oh, role. Everybody called him I Groot. Think the catawamp- yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the, the whole catawampus role was personally my favorite, uh, second to my character. Yeah, I completely agree. We we, we love the catawampus. Um, one, one, one question I have, and this is a bit more random, is how late would you guys have to leave at Origins? Because that line was always ridiculous. Um, so mazes, they operate, operate on two casts. So they have an A cast, B cast. It's hour on, hour off, hour on, hour off. Um, usually, depending on the night, if it's a Friday, Saturday night, because um, I, I was never B cast. I was the first cast. I was the first one in, first one out. Um, usually what I've been told is sometimes they'll be out there maybe like another 30 minutes 45 minutes latest an hour so after park closing just to clear the line because that line did get did get very long yeah no i completely agree i mean i've seen nights in ghost town where it extends out into the actually alleyway so you can't really even walk down there you have to go all the way around to just get around yeah yeah no yeah i've seen that line extend um very long especially when i went as, as a guest surprisingly i went as a guest on a thursday and it was surprisingly long for a Thursday. I didn't think I, I went in with the uh, expectations that it was going to be a calm day, slow day. I was going to be able to get through a lot of things, but it was actually very busy on a Thursday for me. Completely, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen that line like be like three hours long, which is yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I would wait. I would wait for it because that, that maze is my absolute favorite maze of all time. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> it's a lot of people's favorite mazes, especially like like I said earlier, the diehard fans, uh, because it's the origins, it's the origin story. Um, you know, from the moment you're out, like from the moment you hit the queue line, you're already in the maze technically because you got those characters that are outside. You have, um, you know, the lawman, you have the the grave digger, you have the mayor, you know, all that. You have the, all those all those characters that are outside interacting with you in the queue. Yeah, it's like a build up to the story before you get in you know what i mean so it's a lot of fun yeah. to take that in yeah yeah most definitely and um i don't know if you i'm pretty sure you guys have noticed but when you're walking through the maze you you see this the mirrors the mirrors with uh, sarah marshall's face on them right and if you go and some people don't pay attention to it but as you're going through the maze she just gets goes from human to, to witch it just yeah. it, pro, it just progresses there's even and one I think point it's funny you bring that up because there's one point when you're like towards the end of the maze before you get into the catawampus room that you just see the full blown transformation happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is one of the coolest things um, about that maze. It's that whole, you see the progression of her go from uh, Sarah Marshall to the green witch. Yeah. And then uh, obviously before that final transformation, uh, after you pass the catawampus, you see her in her full form flying around the room, which is a really cool setup for that. Yeah. That that is probably one of my favorite. Um, I call I call those stunts. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite stunts in, throughout the whole not scary farm mazes. Yeah, I mean, I I'd, I'd give me a freaking witch costume. I'll go up there and do that. <laughs> oh, most definitely, yeah. Do it for an hour. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Any day. Yeah, man. Any day. Just gonna swing around and stuff. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. that's my. I love that scene. Don't get me wrong. My favorite scene is the hand. And watch people get stuck in the hand oh, as you're trying to yes. exit the maze. It's happened to me, and so <laughs> I like to I like other people to feel my pain. <laughs> yeah, that, that that hand is is the best thing, one of the best things in that maze. I love I just love that whole maze in general. It's it's my one of my favorite ones. Yeah, man. So let's fast forward to 2021, man. I mean, I've been hearing it since you started auditioning for Not Scary Farm. The year you finally get on Boardwalk, man. Talk to us about that experience, how it felt for you to finally finally get that role after doing two years of mazes. So we're gonna we're gonna backtrack to the a little bit um to when they called me actually. And uh I told my girlfriend, um, because she she does haunt too. I told her if they get us back, if we do it again this year, I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm just gonna take my spot back in origins if if they offer me the spot back. So I, I was going in with that mentality is uh, I'm going to get my spot back. I'm going to get my spot back. I didn't think about it. Um, you know, I set up the appointment to, to do the interview and they called me and they're like, hey, yeah, um, we'd actually like to offer you a spot in Boardwalk. And 
inside I was screaming and jumping like a little girl. I just, I was like, oh, dream come true. And I was like, yes, absolutely. I will, I will take that spot. Um, so leading up to the event, I was, I had this idea of what I wanted to do um, with my character. Uh, and then as soon as I hit the zone, I was like, what am I going to do? I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, so my character is Oingo. He, he's a, like a mischief, mischievous greaser kid um, who was just going to the, to the fair, to the carnival with his friends. And um, so his backstory starts off that he's, you know, a rebellious kid. He grew up a rough life. He's got a few, a few siblings and uh, he was just, you know, the cool kid in the group. He was the one that always like, oh, um, you know, go do this, go, go, go steal some candy from the candy shop. He was that kid. He was that uh, greaser kid. So he was hanging out with his little greaser friends um, when one day they're like, hey, let's go to the carnival. And he was like, oh yeah, like it'll be fun. So he went, he ends up going to the carnival and um, his, his friends, they're like, uh, okay, um, I dare you to go mess with the clowns. So he wouldn't go mess with the clowns and it got to the point where he ended up messing with the wrong clown and he got, you know, captured and he, they made him part of the carnival. So that's deep right there, man. That's deep. That is uh, where my story for 2021 is at. Um, I've actually, once the season ended, I've actually been working on the story a lot more. Right. Um, So he had, like I said, he has siblings, his he has a twin sister. His twin sister is actually going to be Bobbins. Oh, interesting. yeah. So that that's 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 my twin sister. Um, usually, we'd walk around, you know, the carnival asking people who who was the prettiest twin. <laughs> um, I don't want to give too much about like my coming up backstory, but yeah, she, yeah. She got eventually. She got to the point where she got mad that everybody was saying that he was the prettiest twin. And after years and years and years of just being like ignored and not being told she was pretty, she eventually ended up stabbing him with her giant needle. So, man, you're already setting it up, man. You're giving you're giving us the uh, the preview for 2022, man, and I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I already uh, how you guys. Like, oops, go for it. Go for it. Uh, I'll, I'll ask my question after. Uh, as uh, I already enjoyed being an aggressive person out there i i just i i was more of a going in for the kill like right away right there were times where i would like you know put myself in a dark corner and i'd wait and i'd watch and like i'd follow i'd creep behind you um but i was more in going for the kill just going in for the kill um for a while after vertigo came in uh, i was running with him a lot so i incorporated him him into my backstory as well where he's uh, the only person I trust after Bombins kills me. Oh uh, man, you made a mistake doing having him trust you. You trust him? Yeah. Come on. I mean, on. I I don't even trust him, and I'm friends with him. So you know, <laughs> I trust you. I know you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I I I trust him um, enough to help me out in going getting to a certain objective, um, which is more about my backstory. Uh, but yeah, I was, I, I, I enjoyed being the aggressive person. I, I, you know, usually when I ran with Paul, uh, Vertigo, um, it was always like, you know, tag teaming either he, he distract and I'd go in for the kill or I distract and he'd go in for the kill. It was just back and forth. Or there were times where we'd go in for the kill at the same time. And it just, it worked in our favor, like a hundred, a hundred percent of the time where we would go in for the exact same scare and we weren't expecting it. So I would fling my arm and he, he, he'd fling his, you know, his hammerhead and it would, it would be get to the point where we would touch, like I would touch his hammerhead with my fist and we just pretty much block people in and we draw people left and right. I like it. I like the team up. I like the anticipation. I like the build up, and I like the execution. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So here's my question. Um, for those who uh, follow around on Instagram, some of the uh, KSF monsters, um, there was uh, some questions about Bob and looks a lot lookalikes. Would you say that you're the most um, lookalike to Bobbins in Carnival? I mean, 
there are a lot of lookalikes, but I, as I was going through a lot of the pictures, um, although there's not solid resemblance between myself and Bobbins, we do have the, the, the lines that are straight through the eyes and then the smile, except my, my, her, her lines and her makeup, it was just a lot of red and white and like, you know, small little details. Mine was just solid black on the eyes and the mouth. But I, 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 I do think that I do have a little bit more resemblance to her. I hundred percent agree. That is my personal. That is my personal thing. Um, you know, some people will disagree. Like you said, you agree. I agree. Uh, I agree. You got my support. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she, she is, she is my twin. She is my other. <sighs> Boom. Um. So with Carnival this year, man. Uh, twenty twenty one. We're returning to full time haunts again, man. The anticipation, your uh, overall kind of feeling going towards. 2021 season it's the return man what are you feeling how nervous are you going out there to, to perform in front of a crowd and over at least like maybe you know two years at, at this capacity you know what i mean i was honestly i was extremely nervous um i'm not gonna sugarcoat anything for you i, I was extremely nervous i like i said i had no idea what i was gonna do i had no idea what i had just set myself up for um I went out there and I was like, oh, like I've, I've at, at, a, at one point um, during the run, I was like, I've set myself up for failure because um, I felt like I wasn't getting like the attention from the guests that I was looking for. But eventually I kind of just used that to my advantage and like all the, the nerves and the anxiety, I, I used that to my advantage and I just, you know, grew, grew out there. Eventually by the end of the run, I was, not even by the end of the run, maybe third week into the run, I was just fully confident in my myself and my abilities to be out there. Right. No, I, I completely understand it. It probably was, obviously, you know, a lot of people coming back were just either excited to be back or it was a nervous thing where it's been a couple of time, a couple of years and they got to knock that rust off a little bit, but then once they get out there, yeah. it's like they never lost their touch. You know what I mean? No, yeah, absolutely. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the people that I, I was out there with um, – that I've seen in Carnival in 2019, it, it looks like they they've been there every single day since 2019. It looks like they they haven't dropped a sweat. Right. So, um, regarding your character Oingo, where do you where do you say you draw inspiration from that character or for that character? I should be saying. Um. So you know the character's name is Oingo. Uh, I based his name actually off the band Oingo Boingo because it's actually one of my one of my personal favorite bands and uh it, it was just something that just came off the top of my head I didn't really expect him to grow or get the attention that you know that I've been getting but the character he's uh kind of based off um West Side Stories so he's a, like he's a greaser kid you know yeah. he's he's rebellious he's kind of he's got a little bit of like the way I grew up uh I grew up very like a very rebellious kid um you know i was kind of that kid that didn't take anything from nobody um if i somebody tried to bully me i'd always stand up for myself i was always uh, picking fights with the biggest kids in, in the in the playgrounds right i mean are you, uh, like story, are you part of the jets or what yeah the jets are the sharks man sharks are jets. <laughs> sharks. sharks sharks all the way right Sharks all the way. You know, it's funny, <laughs> funny sidetrack real quick, but I'm really looking forward to that new uh, movie done by Steven Spielberg. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, if, if we're thinking about the same movie, then I, I know, I kind of know what you're talking about, but yes. Yeah. It looks good. Uh, Carnival, obviously known for its comedic uh, tactics of how they do things, man. And I love it. That's the reason why I come visit it every year just to get a good laugh out of it. I could sit there for, hours upon hours just watching you guys make me laugh sometimes i've even gone to the point where i i was in tears laughing because it was that funny <laughs> uh being that i mean i know this is always the hardest thing to look back at but what are some of your favorite memories or, or moments uh this season that you had yourself even laughing you know potentially even breaking character because it was just so funny that you started laughing um halloween night actually i don't know if you guys know who uh vulgar is KSF Vulgar. Right. Um, he, he's been doing this thing 
for a long time and where he would go out into the zone and he'd be a blind man. He was out there way before any of us. And I went out there and I saw him doing that. And there was that one point where he's, he's like walk, almost walking into people swinging his cane. And I'm just like busting laughing. Like I had to take a step to the side and just, cause I was, I was just laughing so hard. And then, I went to I went my separate ways and and then I see I encounter him again by um by the the diner coasters and he's hanging on to this rope and he's I'm telling him that it's a cliff that there's sharks at the bottom <laughs> and he and it it gets to the point where I'm just encouraging him to jump and he jumps and he's like you're such a liar <laughs> and that I think that was one of the moments that just made me break like extremely hard like <laughs> i just i couldn't stop laughing oh man blind man gimmick can't go wrong with that one that's a that's always no, a funny was, one yeah yeah he he would also go into um he would go to uh like our borders um and there was a part of our like the borders the zone borders where there's a planner that is kind of like right by going 20s right so he would go there and he'd stand on the planner and I've been told by a bunch of Goring 20s people that they would tell them to jump. They would, they would just like, jump, jump, jump. <laughs> it's just, vulgar is, it's something else, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've heard of, in Ghost Town, there being um, possum parties. Um, are there dead man parties in Carnival? I have dead man parties every night. There it <laughs> I mean, is. I'm not going to lie. Um I, I usually like to invite people to the dead man parties um, after, right after like, uh, the, the kill. I, if I drop somebody, I'll be like, oh, you're invited to the dead man's party. Uh, I like that. There's no, no, no really anything big dead man parties going on right now. I think we're going to have to start the, uh, the dead man party cult next season. Yes, most definitely. We're going um, to we're gonna have to take down Wackus Bonkus and, and bring Wackus the dead man Bonkus party. is going down. Wackus, dead man's Wackus party Wackus is coming in. Down. You're, you're here to hear you here to hear first. We're starting Dead Man's Party this weekend. I'll be your official press guy and everything. I got you. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we're gonna find a way. We're gonna we're gonna ban candy in the carnival. We're gonna get rid of all the candy shops. <laughs> so um, I gotta talk about this because I thought this was hilarious, man. And there was you know I've seen some so much footage of it and everything. Uh, congratulations, by the way, you and your zone won. Um, you know the the Golden Hawn Award for best scare zone of 2021. Uh, Carnival, we congratulations did. to everyone on Carnival, by the way. Um, you guys are such talented uh, monsters, and it's it was great to see you guys this weekend. Well-deserved, but this goes for every zone. You guys killed it this year because it was the return 110% every night that we saw. Uh, we love each and every one of you, but congratulations for the Golden Hawn Award. That being said, when you guys found out, I had seen some footage of you guys invading another said scare zone, uh, and blowing the roof and shoving it in their face. And that was the Goring 20s. Tell me a little bit about that, man. How was that? That must have been a fun time. So actually, funny thing is that actually happened um, a few days before Sunday night, which is when we found out we won the Golden Hawk Award. Um, we we just had this, we with uh, Goring 20s, we were just buttonhead every single night. And uh, it was it was always going back and forth between Goring 20s and Carnival where they would win the trophy one night, we would win the trophy another night. And it got to the point where we were uh, ahead by uh, three points, uh, by three trophies. And um, there was one weekend where they got the trophy back-to-back -back three times and we ended up tying. And we ended up breaking the tie um, the next day. So they ended up invading our zone. And what we did, what some of our cast did, um, I wasn't there at the, at the time. They went backstage to grab the trophy and they took it and they just took it across the Goring 20s. And the, it happened on three separate occasions where they would go to the, they, they would invade Goring 20s and they just beat up all the Goring 20s people. And I've seen videos and it, I think that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, hands down. I mean, if you're having competition back to back every weekend of who's going to take it home, scare zone of the night and it's between you guys and Goring 20s. Like, there's there's no depth. There's, there, there's, that, there's that competition and rivalry in there, but it's all for good, fun, and games. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. Um, my girlfriend is actually in the Goring 20s, so there was always confrontation. Like, just, you know, friendly banter between myself and her. 
<laughs> on the nights that they, they would win, then she'd be like, oh, look, haha, we got it. And on the nights we would win, I'd be like, oh, look, haha, we got it. And that's when she would tell you, all right, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the moment, the moment that she would win, I couldn't say that. Yeah, you're like, uh... she'd be like, she'd be like, oh, really, really? We'll see about that. <laughs> nice try. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Uh, I love I love that though this season that was a great uh, great back and forth competition I, I had a uh, one of my buddies who worked in Mesmer would send me the uh, list every night of who won so I was having my own tally wars and it was every every weekend it oh, was Goran twenties yeah. and 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 Carnival that were trying to go back to back with it so that was yeah. a lot, that was a lot of fun um, to see I think it's cool because the last time Carnival actually won the Golden Horn Award um, from what I've been told was in 2011 Wow Oh wow you guys so broke 2011 the curse. 2012 yeah exactly 10 years uh, later yeah 10 years later we we ended up getting it again it's that 2020 so uh, return man everybody was ready they wanted it yeah i i i feel honestly like i feel very honored to you know my first first season on streets uh especially the street zone that i wanted to be in for the past years um winning the golden haunt award and me being a part of that it just it, it feels great right Speaking of uh, great things here, um, were you there with the the famous uh, TikTok not scary farm proposal in the Python Carnival? I was I I saw that whole thing happen, but I was actually just a few feet away from that whole interaction. But Would I saw you ever that whole thing. To someone there? <laughs> Would I ever propose to someone there? I think it, it's 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 a cool thing to do. It's great for them. Um, but at, 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 at an event like that, if you're coming as a guest, not necessarily, but if you, if you plan something out, um, let's, let's say two monsters are, you know, dating and then, you know, a monster from one zone wants to propose to his significant other, if that's a monster in another zone. I think if you plan that out and you plan, plan it out properly and with time, it could be like such a great thing, but th- that, that proposal it was so unexpected. It caught me off guard. Uh, only a handful of people actually knew wow. that it was going to happen. I'd be scared I was going to lose a ring or get caught while going <laughs> through security because it's like, why is this metal beeper going off? <laughs> yeah. And then you have to blow your cover you know, right there. <laughs> yeah, your significant other is just right there, right next to you going like, what? why, why, why are you holding up the line? You know? yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Just go wait by the ticket booth. I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just go get yourself a drink. Get, get yourself a uh, loosened up yeah yeah i'll be over there i'll be over there in a sec uh man i i have so many great memories uh watching carnival um this year and uh so many it, it's just been such a fun season this year just to see you guys work man and and have a great time i am excited to see what goes down for next year man and uh i have to ask you man you know sliding is huge at not scary farm uh, do you want to eventually inc- incorporate sliding into the Oingo character? I actually do plan on incorporating sliding into the Oingo character um, next season. So the way that works is you have to at least do one season out in the street zones before you can start sliding. Right. Um, if it's your first year out on the streets uh, with enough time that you go ahead and go ask permission, you can do uh, a, what's called a slider apprenticeship where, where you will be with um, somebody who has been sliding for a while and they'll be your mentor. You know, they'll give you tips on what to do, what not to do, um, especially in a zone like Carnival where it gets, it gets extremely packed. Yeah. Um, they, they, especially like um, Joker, for example, he's, he's, he was one of the people that mentored me. He actually gave me a lot of, great tips and great advice on what, what, what I should do, like what I should be looking for as well. And um, what I should do in the case if something goes wrong. Right. I wouldn't take advice from him. He jumps off planners to slide. You know what? Which looks I, terrible I, I, for your knees. <laughs> I think sliding in general is terrible for your knees, but jumping off planners is even worse. And that's something I will end up doing in the yep. future as well. No, it's all right. Joker, take advice from him. I love you, Joker. I know he's watching. <laughs> I'm, though, I'm his number one fan. He even though he'll never be on this goddamn show for some reason. I don't know why, but... Uh, uh, you know. I don't blame him. Hashtag, in the comments, hashtag get Joker on the show. Get it going. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I JFC. He'll know. JFC. I, I think I think he might just sit here in silence and judge you both. No, he'll probably comment and just go no. You know, I know how he is. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I really did enjoy watching you guys this season. I, I felt that it, compared to 2019 and 2021, I was in Ghost Town a lot in 2019. This year, I was in Carnival more than anything. Um, and that's just the, 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 the reason why that is because it was just a fucking fun time. I, I, I knew a lot of people that worked the zone. I got to meet a lot of brand new people for the first time, uh, yourself, uh, being one of those people. Um, and I knew there was a lot of amazing, amazing talent out there that I really wanted to uh, showcase on this show. And that's the whole reason why we do this, this month is to showcase a lot of the, um, amazing talent and work you guys put into in a whole season and the the amount of time and, and effort it does to to go into creating a character, to auditioning, to um, getting out there on the streets, to figuring out who you are for next season, or if you want to incorporate, you know, Frankenstein some stuff throughout the season. It's the whole reason why we do this show, just so we can learn more about the person behind the monster. And uh, yeah. we appreciate the hell out of you guys for going out there every night, even though you this was probably the toughest season from what I heard and seen with, you know, uh, altercations with guests and um, various fights and whatnot, but you guys, in the end of the night, you always pull through and you keep doing it because we know in the bottom of our hearts you guys love this event so much that you guys are going to push through and, and keep going for it. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. Um, I will I will keep doing this event even if my legs are falling off. That's <laughs> I, I just I love doing it. Um, ever since my first season, I've, I've loved doing it, so I will keep doing it. For what's sure. a, what's your what's your favorite part about being a monster my favorite part about being a monster is um you know getting away from my day-to-day -day life my day life and my day job and just you know turning off um like I, um one of the other monsters in carnival actually told me it's um you're putting your day self your normal self you're putting putting them in the back of your mind and you're becoming somebody completely different for the night so I think just that whole aspect and that whole like thinking is just what I was going with. And, um, you know, that's what I, that's probably my favorite part is just being somebody else for a night. I, I completely agree, man. It's, it's something that, um, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity for at a home haunt this year. Cause you know, I've always wanted to do it, but, um, I know myself and I know my limits that, I don't think I'm ready to do a full season like you guys. And that's why I respect the fuck out of you guys. Just doing one night for four hours, I was like, I don't know how these guys do it for like six, seven hours. Like, these guys are fucking on a whole new level. Um, yeah. But I've always said from the beginning, I respect the fuck what you guys do even before I got the opportunity to do it because it, it is a very tough job. You have to have very thick skin to do this. Yeah, I remember you telling me that you experienced a uh, whole season of Haunt in four hours. I did. I, I really did, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I got... Uh, people wanted to fight me. I was getting hit by fucking props. Uh, I got shit thrown at me. Uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I, I seen someone. I, I made someone fall. I made a shoelace fall off a kid. I still don't understand the the science behind that, but I did it. Uh, I made a girl yeet her phone in the in the air. That was a lot of fun. Um, so everything that I've heard, seen, uh, witnessed happened to me in four hours, and I was just like, this is what they go through in the first ten minutes at knots. Yeah, it's so funny that you bring up actually stuff falling off people. There, it reminds me of this one era, one, one scare I got where um, I was actually sliding that night and I went in for a slide and this girl just, uh, she had no time to react. She jumped and she ran at the same time that her left shoe fell off. Oh, man. And um, like that's that's another thing about Oingo is he's obsessed with left shoes. And it's the left shoe in specific, too. It all started when um, uh, opening weekend, um, I scared a guest who who also lost their left shoe. <laughs> and her left, it was, a, it was a croc. It was a left croc. And ever since then, I've just grown, Oingo's grown with this obsession for left shoes. <laughs> and, and, and then that night where I was able to scare her, it was a shoelace, too. It was like a, sho like a, a Nike Air Force One, I think. <laughs> um it, it like i looked at it and it looked like it was like shoelace so tight that like nothing could take it off but i was able to scare that shoe off of her and that's i just feel like i've accomplished everything i've wanted that's you're like it's it yeah i know I, I was like that's what happened to me when i got the shoelace i was like this kid came back from a shoelace i'm like how the f how did that happen i was like all right <laughs> whatever 
No, but I, I, I really had a fun time, and I, I know I was telling, you know, I was talking to a couple, I was talking to, to Vertigo last night, I was talking to a couple other people last night, and I was telling them, like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I'm ready to do, like, a full season, like, I, I could do spots here and there, but I'm not ready for a full season, they were, like, all, well, you watch all these people, you interview all these people, like, you know a lot about it, you got to do it for a night, I think you're pretty much ready for a full season, I'm like, how do you know what I'm honestly, ready for? <laughs> I honestly think you should give one full season a try. You, you should give it a try. Um, if you if you start the season but you feel like it's not for you, nobody's gonna hold you against it. Um, I've seen I've seen people that go do it and they're like so excited when you meet that when you meet them at orientation and then like the season starts and they're just like I can't do this and you know they start dropping like flies. They just, like in mazes zones, like people are dropping left and right, and they just they 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 can't finish the season, and oh, yeah. it, it it happens. It it happens more often than you than you think. Once I'm committed um, to something, though, I won't quit. Trust me, I'll 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 pull through all the way through. It's gonna it's gonna be hell in the first couple uh, first couple of days, but I'll I'll eventually I'll pull through. No, yeah, absolutely. The first couple of days finding that groove, it just it sucks because you don't you have no idea what you're doing. Right. Um, but once you into your own groove and into like your character that you've come up with, um, you know, you're making up your own scares, your own scare tactics, your own movements, your own, you know, um, you know, your, your own voices, your own lines, it just works. And then you do what works for you and you're just killing it all season long. Exactly. Um, so another uh, question for you. Um, how did you get the name Gomez as your, uh, your haunt name? I'm, I'm sorry. My headphones. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, of course. How did you get the haunt name Gomez? <laughs> uh, funny story is, um, I was, I, I have uh, eye black on, and then and you, as you guys can see, I have you know the curled stash. Right. Uh, I was taking off my makeup and I was undressing in the you know the back area, and one of the other haunt monsters um, goes by Bouncer. She and like a few other haunt monsters are like, oh, you look like. Um, the guy I forgot I keep forgetting his name, but he's the guy that does the voice of Gomez Adams in the animated Adams family. Okay. Uh, they were they were saying that I look like him, and then like it just it they're like, oh no, you look like Gomez Adams, <laughs> and it it just you know one, like one after the other, one, two, three, four. They're like, yep, your name's your heart name is now Gomez. So that's that's what it's been. It's yeah. Gomez. I um, love it. Un- unfortunately, I got my haunt name after I had already put in my order for my jersey. Um, my my baseball jersey, I put it on my hockey jersey, which I'm hoping it gets here soon. Uh, and a few of the other haunt monsters also call me Pringles, like the Pringles man. Nice. So That's a good, we that's have those. some good chips, man. I'm just saying. Yeah. Let's, uh, Pringles, where you at? Let's get a sponsorship going. <laughs> <laughs> Does a does a Pringles uh, go well with a Reuben sandwich? There you go. You know what? I think it does. You like chips and sandwiches, Pringles and Reuben sandwiches. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I, personally, I've never had Reuben sandwiches, but I love like the sour cream and um, onion. That's the best one Pringles. in my opinion. Those are delicious. <laughs> Those are delicious. Um, Gomez, it, you know it's a pleasure, honestly, seeing you scare this year. But it's also a pleasure to get you know to get to, get to know you as a person. I've I've gotten to um, obviously we play online video games together. Um, yeah, and you know we've been talking about that too. And then when I finally hit you up, I was like, hey, you want to do a podcast? You're like, you're a hundred percent in for it. Um, yeah. And I remember talking to a lot of Carnival people about it, and they're excited that we got you on um, this season. What I wanted to do is obviously I wanted to bring back some of the people that we had in 2019, but I really wanted to get a lot of fresh faces for 2021. Um, there's so many great talent out there that um, go out there and give 110% every single night because they love what they do. They love their, their jobs and whatnot every single season. So there's a lot of people on here that you're going to see throughout the season of November that are brand new to the the podcast game. And we're, we're very much, um, very much looking forward to having them on or already had them on because uh, there's a lot of people out there that have amazing stories to tell like yourself, man. And uh, we're, we're just happy that we can provide that platform for you guys to tell your story. There's not a lot of platforms out there that do that. And we're just happy that we can be one of those platforms to, to for you guys to tell the story. I appreciate you guys having me on here, man. It's, it, it's great chatting with you guys. Like you said, we do, we do, we do game a lot. 
So, you know, we've gotten to know each other uh, a little bit more personal than a lot of your viewers right. uh, are going to be able to get to know me. Right. Uh, I'm just hoping that what they can get out of this is they get to know the character a little bit more going into the 2022 season. Uh, they can see you out there having a better understanding of who you are and uh, what your character is is essentially. So that's that's the overall goal for this, just to give a backstory of, of what you've done in the past and what you're planning on doing for the future. Yeah, no, I completely understand. Um, I will be posting my a little bit more about my backstory as the months go on on my, you know, on my characters page. Right. Yeah. So uh, go follow that. It is KSF. What is it? KSF underscore Gomez. Uh, KSF dot Gomez. Dot Gomez. Okay. I always get confused. Some people do the dot. Some people do the underscore. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, now yeah, so. KSF dot Gomez. Go follow his character page to keep up to date uh, on his backstory. Some probably per probably some awesome pictures he's going to get receiving pretty soon from other people that have probably seen him in the park. And I've been seeing a lot of them lately on uh, your Instagram and when you've done Q and A's and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah. So I do have a few pictures that I'm going to be posting pretty, pretty soon. Um, one last question before you wrapped it up. And I think you may have already answered it, but I'm going to ask it again anyway. Uh, what's your favorite scary movie of all time? My favorite scary movie of all time. I will always, always, always be, um, a Nightmare on Elm Street, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. The original, man. What do you think of uh, Dream Warriors? Dream Warriors. I don't, I don't, I don't have much to say on it because I haven't really looked into it. Right. I've heard, I've heard mixed reviews on it. Um, but now that you bring it up, I might look a little bit more into it. Yeah. But so far, a lot of the reviews that I've been told are good things. It's a, so. it's a, it's a definitely a, a cult favorite right there, man. I mean, you can ask Vertigo. The minute you bring up the band Dawkin, he'll probably lose his shit and get a freaking all excited like a little kid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you got uh, Dawkin does the obviously the uh, title, um, the title track for the movie Dream Warriors. So it's a fan favorite. It's I guess it's a, an iconic one. But I don't know what they decided to do after that. I mean, it just kind of started going like the studio was like, we just need to make money. Let's just put Freddy in every movie, <laughs> not have a script. No, but the original, uh, you have Johnny Depp in there. Uh, I mean, yeah. as a young Johnny Depp, uh, up and coming Wearing actor. Wearing a crop right top. Wearing his crop top, yeah. He's yep. got the infamous kill that he gets sucked into the bed, upside down. You know, that's really cool. Yeah. That was I, a lot of fun. That is, that is probably one of my favorite Freddy kills. Yeah. I mean, it's iconic, man. And just to see how they how they accomplished it, man, it's, it's so, so interesting. So, awesome, man. Well, Gomez, I want to personally thank you for coming on the show sharing your story uh getting it out there man and i cannot wait to see you back in carnival in 2022 man it's yeah be man a wild ride yeah thanks for having me on here guys i, I really appreciate it and giving you guys giving me the opportunity to you know put my character out there without that being said sammy go ahead and uh end it yeah of course well thank you all for watching if you liked that video go ahead and drop that like button below and if you didn't like the video hit the dislike button i know we never tell you to do that but do it it's all for the algorithm. It's all for drop the algorithm. Comment. <laughs> Smart. Drop a, com drop a comment down below so that our great friend Gomez can read those um, and, you know, uh, share about your, your personal experiences if you did come across him and he uh, terrified uh, you to poop yourself or something. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, nonetheless, go follow us on Twitter at Nights of War and on Instagram at The Nights of War. I've been your boy, Sam. That's been Tony. That's been Gomez. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace. You're moving into a dimension of war.